IG Media presents High Tech Sunday. On today's episode of High Tech Sunday, our hosts, Dr. Mark Vaughn and Lango Dean, sit down with the project manager of research for the School of Engineering and Computer Science at the University of Texas at Dallas, Dr. LaShawn Massey. Up first is Corning Incorporated's manager of technical talent pipelining, Dr. Mark Vaughn. Next is Career Communications Group's Senior Technology Editor, Lango Dean. Finally, our esteemed guest, Dr. LaShawn Massey. Along with her role as the Project Manager for Research at the University of Texas at Dallas, Dr. Massey is also a registered professional engineer and owner of LaShawn King Environmental Group, PLLC. As an academic and industry leader, Dr. Massey has demonstrated a commitment to promoting the scholarly exchange and the pursuit of intellectual communication on state, national, and international levels. She has also been a champion for promoting environmental engineering education in underserved and minority communities. Recently, she authored a book, The Face of the New Engineer, to help motivate and inspire potential students to pursue engineering careers. And without further delay, High Tech Sunday, featuring Dr. Mark Vaughn and Lango Dean. Well, thank you so much for that introduction, Brandon, and really looking forward to another engaging conversation. And the topic today is certainly something that's going to be supremely inspirational, becoming boundless. And so we're going to jump right in. But first, let me ask you, Dr. Massey, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I am great as well. Got to ask you right off the bat, since we see from the introduction uh, that you are in the Dallas area, how are you faring in the wake of the recent uh, issues uh, due to the uh, historically bad weather that wreaked havoc on the region? Yes, absolutely. Uh, My family and I, we are doing great. We were very fortunate uh, throughout the storms not to lose power. Um, We did have some water and piping issues. However, uh, we did not lose any power. Uh, My family was warm and uh, we did very well. So um, we were very blessed to be one of those people that did not lose power. I'm so glad to hear that. And and you got the right word. That is a, a blessing. And and we're continuing to, of course, uh, hope for the best for the entire state uh, and those who were uh, impacted in such a severe way. Uh, let, let's do something uh, to get things going. And that is a kind of find out a little bit about what makes you, you. Uh, If you think about the journey that you've been on, was certainly blown away uh, by all of the uh, experiences and the accomplishments from being uh, an academic, an entrepreneur, uh, an advocate. Uh, So uh, let's talk about what actually got you there. Can you say a little bit about your background and and why did you choose the pathway, especially the career path uh, that you chose? I like to think of myself as being a small town country girl. Um, I was born and raised in Arkansas on a farm with my grandparents. And I just think of LaShawn being out in a field uh, miles and miles away from my closest neighbor. Um, But it was because of this type of atmosphere and culture that my grandparents and my mother um, had that helped to really instill some of the values that I have. And it helped to shape who I am. So it's because of these upbringings that I learned the importance of, of being dedicated to work because I did help with some of the manual labor out on the farm. Uh, It helped to instill uh, being dedicated, being committed, and how to uh, be persistent and to persevere through different challenges in life. So these were some of the guiding that I use even today and have used throughout my career. Uh, Growing up in such a small town, there were only about 30 
two uh, students in my high school uh, graduating class. And I recall uh, when I was in high school, my math teacher saying that, LaShawn, you should pursue engineering. And I'm thinking, engineering, well, what is that? And the only explanation at the time that he gave was that you're really good with math. And also I've heard that you're good in science as well. So this got my wheels to start, you know, turning. I was thinking, oh my gosh, well, I have to learn more about engineering. But because it was such a small community in a small rural town, there were not a lot of resources or people that I could ask about, well, what is engineering and what does a career path look like in engineering? So uh, fortunately, I was able to be involved in an upper bound program. And in this upper bound program, it helped me to learn more about the different possible career paths. There's an upper bound program that was geared toward helping low income minority students prepare for college. And I can recall some of the first visits um, with the upper bound program to college campuses. I went to uh, Tennessee State University. And after visiting the campus at TSU, talking with professors, meeting the dean, I felt right at home. Um, it helped to take away some of the nervousness that I had, some of the anxiety that I had about being away from home, and it also helped to show me what potential um, career paths that I could choose with going into engineering. So it was from that Upper Bound program and having the opportunity to visit Tennessee State University that I did choose a career path uh, in engineering. I um, majored in an undergraduate civil engineering program there, and I completed my undergraduate program and also the master's program there uh, in engineering. Wow. Thanks for sharing that story and uh, kind of the testimony of, of your formative years. When you think about one of the things that you uh, articulated about TSU, you said it felt like home. <laughs> and and we, we, certainly, we certainly hear uh, a lot about that being kind of just one of the many benefits that people find when they uh, are able to enjoy an HBCU experience. But there's also the quality of education that you get uh, from places like Tennessee State. When you uh, think about your uh, proficiency, your excellence in uh, science and math. Was there something that you recall doing or enjoying when you were growing up out there in the middle of nowhere that kind of made it feel like, wow, I, I kind of do have a knack for uh, this particular pathway? So I was in high school, I was involved in quiz bowl. And during quiz bowl competitions, it would test your academic abilities. And I would love the questions that were centered around the math and the science. They would have uh, categories in the bonus round. And I would be so excited when they had the, the chemistry section or the, the math or the algebra questions because this would this was my strength. Uh, and also being able to tutor other students as well, um, it became clear to me at that point that the math and the science um, came easy for me. I enjoyed uh, those particular uh, subjects and I wanted to pursue that. Got it. When you are reflecting up on, uh, again, your childhood. You mentioned growing up on the farm with your 
grandparents. One of the things that we have found to be kind of a common thread on High Tech Sunday is the role that spirituality has played in the lives of uh, the esteemed and accomplished guests that we have had the pleasure of having a chance to sit down and speak with. Can you speak to how uh, spirituality has influenced your life from maybe growing up until now? Mm -hmm. As a child, um, I grew up going to church with my, my grandma and my mom every Sunday. I, I was a member of the choir. I would lead songs in the choir. I, I would also uh, give presentations at church, give speeches in church. This helped me to really understand how spirituality could help keep me grounded in whatever I wanted to pursue in life. And it's something that I continue to use today because I can remember getting up and giving speeches in church and the feeling that I would have in church, the confidence that I would have. A lot of people, when I, uh, even today, when they ask me to give up and give a technical presentation, and on so many different occasions, so ask, you know, um, were you in communications or, you know, how did you learn to articulate yourself so well? But it was because of my involvement in church, because of the spirituality that I have growing up as a child that helped me in all different facets of my life. When you look at the engineering curriculum or any STEM curriculum, the courses that you'll have to take, the amount of stress that may accompany uh, trying to tackle some of those difficult courses, just the amount of endurance and motivation that you'll need to have in order to complete the program, having some type of spiritual basing or a spiritual grounding is important important for you to be able to complete and make it through those type programs. That is absolutely true. You are speaking to the choir on that one. <laughs> uh, but it, it really is true that uh, you, you spoke about being grounded. Uh, and you also spoke about how it is that you are able to uh, kind of maintain uh, that sense of uh, maybe peace, but that sense of of wellness, uh, right. and we know that that is uh, one of the blessings of our our spirituality. One more question for this segment, then we're going to jump into uh, becoming boundless, and so it'll be uh, the springboard into that part of the conversation. If you had to answer the question, what is LaShawn Massey's calling? <laughs> How would you answer that? Hmm. I would definitely say that my calling would be to inspire others, to encourage others, to motivate others. And doing this by sharing my education and some of the lessons that I've learned throughout my life and my career and to also make certain that others know that the path toward obtaining some of these goals will not be easy. There will be challenges along the way, but just to, to keep going. I think that message is so important. There are many times when sometimes we may face obstacles or we may face challenges and we feel that we can't overcome them or we feel that we're not good enough. But I think that it's important for us to keep going and know that others have traveled that road and have succeeded, and they can too. I love that. And as you were speaking, I thought about uh, the idea of a trailblazer. Uh -huh. uh, and that being someone who, uh, before they actually blazed the trail, might have been just a, a bunch of jungle or or woods, uh, and then they had to come along and walk that walk, uh, and it made it easier for the next one uh, to, and so on, until the path became even more clear uh, somewhere along the line. And so, inspire, 
encourage, motivate as your calling. I think that that is absolutely uh, very, very uh, true about just what we've heard from you so far. Uh, and so let's talk about uh, a lot of the aspects that uh, we heard in the introduction, because there was a lot, you've done a lot. Uh, and so let's talk about one of those pathways, uh, and that is your role as an educator. Why'd you choose to go there? Well, I chose going into education because this would give me a chance to directly impact and influence the lives of our future engineers and our future scientists. And through the education sector, I would have a chance to not only just be a teacher, an instructor, a professor, but to also be a mentor, to also be an advisor, to also be a role model, in addition to academically and technically preparing them for a future and a career in engineering. And so often we don't necessarily think about those being uh, the hats, all of the hats that uh, a professor uh, wears. You, you mentioned not just being uh, the one that is delivering content, but you said a mentor, an advisor, a role model. That last one is, I think, really key these days because of the fact that so often uh, we don't necessarily um, especially people from black and brown communities see that uh, role model uh, that we can emulate, that we can uh, aspire to. Uh, and it's certainly, so, certainly something that is so needful. If you were just an educator, we would have a lot that we would tip our hat to you for. But it's not just that. You are also an entrepreneur. You have your own company. So tell us about that and what your mission is with uh, that endeavor. So a few years ago, I got the idea to start a small engineering consult consulting firm. And one of the reasons why I was so um, excited about doing this is that I did not want to be constrained or boxed into one particular sector. I didn't want to just be bounded in one particular career path. I wanted to always be linked in some ways to other sectors as well. And starting my own company, LaShawn King Environmental Group, gave me the opportunity to do just that. And through this um, small consulting firm, I provide technical guidance and consulting services and supports to clients in environmental remediation and cleanup type of projects. And once again, this gives me a better understanding of how I navigate through different sectors. You know, what are some of the, the challenges uh, that the industries are facing and how do I, I best resolve some of those issues? And so it seems like it's very aligned with how it is that you've gone about the early part of your career as well uh, in that regard. But it certainly speaks to this idea of not being bounded. So uh, during the pre-interview, you may recall that you really spoke highly about this idea of being boundless, limitless, uh, not allowing yourself to be boxed in. Can you say more about what that means to you and why it is so important. I remember during my undergraduate experience, um, there were certain instructors and, and teachers and, and different types of, of folks that would come in and talk with us and they would tell us about the different career paths. And many of them would say, well, okay, you have three choices. You either go into academic type of settings where you're a professor and you work directly with students, or you can decide to go into government where you have a chance to uh, learn more about governmental type of operations and work for federal or state or local type of, of, uh, of businesses. 
or you can do some type of industry or consulting uh, type of career. But the more I thought about having to choose between one sector versus the other sector, the more I did not want to have to make that choice. And I didn't understand why I needed to make the choice. In my mind, I was thinking, well, why can't I merge all three and create my own picture of how I want my career to look? And that's what's so important for me to make certain that I share with my students and also with my mentees, you know, as I talk with them and tell them about my experience, there is no typical type of engineer and you don't have to be bounded to one sector or the other sector. You can create your own painting and tell us how you want your painting to look. You can tell us how you want this mosaic of your career path to look like, where you are uh, being involved in all different sectors. Throughout my career, I've also had the chance not just to work in academic settings and, and institutions and to work with uh, industries and and also have my own company, but also to be involved in governmental operations, obtaining security clearances with the uh, Department of Energy, um, and also now with the uh, U.S. Department of Homeland Security. And I think just being able to work with such variety of different people, you get a diversity of ideas, you get a diversity of conversations, a diversity of thinking uh, processes that you wouldn't necessarily get if you were just bounded in one particular sector versus the other. I think that that really is a critically important message that you just reiterated. And so uh, I'm sure that we're correct in concluding that uh, the idea of being boundless does not just apply to those in the STEM disciplines. You can be boundless in whatever, I think you use the word sector, uh, that you uh, are connected to recognizing that uh, the sector may be your reference point, but it is not uh, the, the place that you have to kind of, the lane that you have to kind of live in. Is, is that kind of the message? Yes. It, it's okay to be involved in different lanes. It's okay for those lanes uh, to overlap. It's okay for you to integrate those in part and make your path truly your own, which is the combination of all of those different lanes. And that's important for uh, some of our young engineers, young scientists that are coming along. It's okay to not to be typical. It's okay to do things your way. When you just use that statement, it's okay not to be typical. I was mindful of an earlier conversation we had maybe a few weeks ago about being a unicorn. Uh, and so uh, the idea uh, that you're espousing is very much in line with that. Uh, so we've got the academician, the professor, the educator, we've got the entrepreneur. And so here's another uh, kind of leg uh, of the stool that makes Dr. Massey so unique. Uh, and so I want to tee that up. We know that um, your passion, one of them is giving back. You've said that, paying it forward uh, and being uh, one who inspires others. And so one way uh, that you've done that is actually through pageantry. Tell us about your journey into pageantry. How'd you get started and, and why did you make that choice in the first place? Yes, absolutely. So a couple of years ago, I got involved in the Mrs. America organization. Um, I wanted to do something that was different. I wanted to find an innovative way that complemented who I was uh, as an engineer, as a mother, as a wife, as a daughter. Um, and I decided to reach out to the director uh, of the Arkansas 
Um, this is Arkansas America Pageant Organization. And this is where I first became involved in this pageant organization. Uh, I ran for Mrs. Arkansas a couple of years ago, and now I'm running for Mrs. Texas this year. I currently hold the title of Mrs. Dallas. And through the Mrs. America organization, this gives me another opportunity to give back because through my platform, empowering through education, the power of knowledge, it, it's an, an additional avenue for me to share my story and for me to have an opportunity to inspire, to motivate, and to encourage others along the way. Last fall, I hosted a virtual meet and greet with Mrs. Dallas. And within this virtual meet and greet, at that time, I had several panelists that were there and they were from industry, they were from academic sector and also from the governmental sector. But it gave uh, participants a chance to ask questions about, well, what does a career look like in industry? Or, you know, why did you decide to go uh, to academia or tell me about the life in uh, a government. I had a, a panelist from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency that talked about a career working uh, at the U.S. EPA. So this gives me a chance to provide some of that critical information that I know a lot of potential students are wanting. Many of their questions stem from, you know, how do I get scholarships? You know, how do I pay for school? How do I fund school? What are the different types of, of organizations and, and grant opportunities that are out there for me? And so you said that, in essence, you are using the Mrs. Texas, the, the Mrs. America organization, that platform uh, as an extension of those values that you mentioned to us earlier, inspiration, encouragement, motivation. Uh, and, and I think that that's phenomenal. There's another B word that I'm thinking about as we think about becoming boundless, and that is balance. You are doing a lot of stuff. How do you balance all of these responsibilities? And that's a great question. Um, being grounded in my spirituality really helps me to remember what's important and why it's important. So if you understand what's important and why it's important, then you'll want to make certain that you have time for the things that are important. For example, in addition to just working, you want to make certain that you have time to nurture your soul and to find something that is uplifting for you. Because during this path, you will have to find something that keeps you motivated. You'll want to find something that gets you up out of the bed in the morning with a smile on your face and ready to go. Because you'll be wearing several hats. You will not only be an engineer, but you may be a parent. You may also be a wife or a husband. So there will be many responsibilities that you will have to juggle. And being grounded in knowing who you are and what you are and why you get up in the morning is important. Making certain that you have time for family. So around your work schedule, if that's a family outing or if that's a family dinner or family lunch or family break, that helps you stay connected with those that are important to you. And also making certain that you have time to self for self care. So if there are things that are important for you, you want to make so certain that you have time to put those in your schedule as well. So I've been I've been here uh, just trying to capture those nuggets because uh, I was going to ask you, uh, could you give us some tips to 
uh, finding a good work-life balance. And, and, and I know that we can probably think that work-life balance is no longer uh, even the thought. It's kind of a work-life integration, so to speak. Uh, but you said, remember what's important and why. You also said, be grounded know who you are and what it is that's important to you. Make time for the people and the things in your life that are important in order for you to maintain and strengthen connections. And then the last nugget I grabbed was make time for self-care. How'd I do? Yes, you did great. You hit all of the, the bullet points that I had. Those tips are extremely important and they have helped me to juggle and to balance everything that I have. And even when having all of these tips, um, there still be times where you may feel that you're overwhelmed. There may be times where you feel like, oh my gosh, my life is not balanced at all. But then you may want to revisit, okay, well, maybe I need to find time, more time for this versus this. So when you create this initial draft of this balance, you may have to come back and make modifications, and that's okay. It, it's an irritant process, and you have to um, be able to make those changes as you see fit along the way. I think that's a great uh, reminder and, and a capture there uh, that we are able to adjust, uh -huh. make different allocations as needed uh, and continue to be optimized in whatever it is that we are lending ourselves to for the time that we are lending it to. One of the ways that we find balance here in High Tech Sunday uh, is with a co-host. And uh, I am going to hand off to my co-host, Lango Dean, who is going to uh, walk us through the next segment. Hey, Lango, how's it going? Going good, Devon. That was a great segue. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to High Tech Sunday, featuring Dr. Mark Vaughn, Lango Dean, and our special guest, Project Manager of Research for the School of Engineering and Computer Science at the University of Texas at Dallas, Dr. LaShawn Massey. Now, back to the show. Welcome to the show, Dr. Massey. It's, uh, it's wonderful to have you on here. Um, I, uh, I wish that Amazon had been, uh, well, I probably should have ordered your book sooner. Uh, <laughs> you mentioned that was mentioned at the top, uh, The Face of the New Engineer, which incidentally published uh, three years ago uh, during Women's History Month, uh, which we're currently in. So, um, but I just want to take you back also to a couple of things that you talked about with Dr. Vaughn. And they, that was the conversation you had with your math teacher, uh, which is very important for students, um, adults, um, influential adults who guide them onto a career path, who see things in them that they don't necessarily see in themselves. I also want you to reflect on federally funded educational programs like the Upward Bound program that you talked about. And from the perspective of someone who benefited from that program and now sharing that, um, the benefits of the, that program with young students today. Um, and, and as you do that, I, I want you to, to sort of like stretch that, expand that so it becomes advice for young students who are thinking now, who were like you many years ago, not sure what they, they, their skill sets were, not sure what their talents were, um, but leaning towards science, technology, engineering, math. And now with all these opportunities out there, um, just what they could pursue within the field of STEM. So it was because of my high school math teacher that I even started to think about a career in engineering. But just hearing the words engineering got me thinking about 
well, oh my gosh, okay, well, this is a career. Let me look more into what uh, is involved in becoming an engineer. And once I got to Tennessee State University, um, I became aware of some of the potential opportunities that an engineering career could hold. And one of the most influential people in my life was an educator and a former dean at Tennessee State University. And he was so important to me because in addition to just being the dean of engineering at the time, he served as my role model. He was a mentor to me. He was one of the people that said, LaShawn, you are a superstar. And this is what I need to see more of you. This is what I need for you to do. This is how you navigate through your educational experiences. This is what you can expect. So it's because of role models and educators like the former dean at TSU that helped me to be who I am today. It was this, it was their investments that helped to make and cultivate and mold me to being the person that I am today. So some of the advice that I would give young students that are thinking about pursuing a STEM uh, education is to find a mentor. And this mentor can be an upperclassman, it could be a, a uh, faculty member, um, it can be, you know, someone that you think highly of, because what you're looking for is you're looking to learn from them. You're looking for them to help guide you through a particular process. Mentors are extremely important because they help you to navigate through different situations. For example, with my former dean, uh, he helped me in my uh, presentation skills, knowing how to present to large and diverse bodies. There were several times that I would have to give presentations to the industrial cluster board, which was comprised of different board members from different companies uh, throughout the engineering fields. So being comfortable with talking, with speaking to a diverse uh, body, in addition to uh, taking his thermodynamics class and uh, learning the principles of thermodynamics. But it's important to gravitate to those mentors that can help you navigate uh, through different situations and, ex and share some of their past experiences and lessons to learn. Another tip that I would, and piece of advice that I would give students is to ask as many questions as you can. You only learn when you ask questions. And I don't think there's a dumb question out there except for the question that's not asked. If you don't know something, it's okay to ask because I guarantee you the person sitting right next to you may have the same question that you have. This is the way that you're going to learn more about the things that you want to do versus the experiences or the potential career path that you do not uh, enjoy or want to do as much. And if you have the opportunity to visit a college campus or shadow a STEM professional, if you know someone who is working in the STEM field, Ask them if it's okay if you could spend a half day with them where you just shadow them to see exactly what they do throughout the day. And this gives you more information about what a typical day looks like. That's wonderful. So a um, couple of tips that I picked up, get mentors early, um, tap into your support network, ask questions of your support network, um, get information, get the right information. And if you can, and try as best as you can to shadow mm -hmm. a STEM professional so that that way you get more insights and perspectives on what they do and what the careers are like and so on and so forth. Um, I wanna look now to something else that you talked about with Dr. Vaughn. And you mentioned something about how 
participating in Mrs. America, I think it, I think was what you said, and different types of organizations like that, how they can help students pay for college, because that, that, that's a major thing right now. Um, but but I, I also want to look at how you address, how you would address being a minority in this field. And the reason I, I ask that is because I guess you know, Miss Universe 2017 was an engineer like you, and she, she liked to take part in, in beauty pageants. But unfortunately, she hasn't been able to break through those stereotypes. Um, so how do you address being a minority in this field? Absolutely. So um, when it comes to funding mechanisms, one of the things that I talked about at uh, my virtual meet and greet last fall was just sharing with students some of the different potential opportunities that are out there to help fund uh, your educational experiences. And there was a representative from the National Gym Consortium that was there that was telling um, some of the participants about some of the funding that was available for those that were thinking about uh, majoring in some of the STEM fields. One of the things that I have to tell myself even today, and I've done this for years, is when I wake up in the morning, is I have to remind myself that, well, Sean, you deserve to be here. Believe in yourself and your abilities. And literally looking in the mirror is one of the ways that has helped me and encouraged me uh, just to you know, navigate through this situation and also being the minority in the field is that you have to make certain that you believe in your capabilities and that you are supposed to be here. You worked hard to achieve the accomplishments that you've achieved in your life. Thank you for that. I, I like the emphasis on self-confidence and also the shout out to um, Jem because um, U.S. Black Engineer Magazine um, has uh, a Black Engineer of the Year Awards Conference has uh, an award that we present every year. Um, student, it was originally uh, the National Gem Student Leadership Award. Um, so it's one way that I know that we have uh, a direct uh, relationship there. But uh, looking specifically now at, you talk about having confidence as an engineer, having confidence as a woman, as a human being, having confidence as a beautiful human being inside and out. Um, but what about your field specifically? Because I know you're an environmental engineer, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, so in my field, which is environmental engineer, I am, in many cases, um, the only minority uh, engineer that's in the that's in the room, and in, in there have been times where I have been mistaken as being a uh, staff support and not. Um, thought of as the technical expert until I actually introduced myself as being the technical expert. So there will be times, especially if you are in a field such as engineering that is dominated by majority, that you will be the minority in the room. And that's why I feel that just having the, the self-confidence become, becomes very important. Once you identify that you are the technical expert, then uh, everyone else is like, oh, okay, well, hi, Dr. Massey. But just, just having the confidence to say, okay, well, this is what I am meant to, to be. This is what I'm trained. This is what I am best talented in will help you to navigate through some of those difficult situations. Well, what about the skill sets? Um, if you're looking towards environmental engineering specifically, what are the skill sets that you need now? I know back in school, you were good at science and math, and that's how you came to the attention of your math teacher. And he or she looked at all of it, the sum of all the parts, and said, hey, I think you make a great engineer. 
What advice would you give to students now? If you were that math teacher 20, 25 years ago, how many years ago, what advice would you give to young students now who are good in science, good in math? Um, what do they need to do to become even better than they are because it's much more competitive now? And the skills that would take them to, um, you know, through college and onto a career, a successful career? Absolutely. Um, so that's a great question. In addition to just being good in math and science, I thought I think it's also very important for students to have communication skills, to be able to articulate themselves um, appropriately, be able to stand in front of an audience and present their findings. More and more, we're seeing engineers be responsible for presenting their work in front of large bodies and audiences. So having those soft skills where you're able to talk about your research, you're able to talk about environmental processes. If you are in, in front of regulators or a regulatory body or a clients that just really want to know is this water safe or not? And they are relying on your presentation to help them to make that determination. You want to be able to talk with, to them in such a way that they understand what you are talking about. So taking a very highly technical presentation and putting it in such a way that everyone can understand is very important. Also being organized in your thoughts and also the delivery of your material. When you uh, present your, your findings or your work or as a first year student, you want to be organized. You want to know when your test is scheduled. You want to know when your homework is due. You want to have a planner that has the office hours and the telephone number of your instructors, just in case you need help with your homework. These things become very important. I can remember my third year as an undergraduate student, I was staying in some uh, college apartments that was right adjacent to campus. And for some reason, my car wouldn't start that morning. And I literally had 10 minutes before class started. So it was just enough time for me to, to, to drive there. But um, so I was, of course, starting to panic. But I had the, uh, the telephone number for the instructor and I called him because he was one of those instructors after the first five minutes, he would you know, close the door and lock the door and you could not come in. So I called him and I said, oh, professor, I am literally in the car and it won't start. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. And once I did uh, get the car going and everything, I was maybe 10 or 15 minutes late. He allowed me to come in, but it's because of that planning, making certain that I have the number of all of my professors in my planner. So just in case if anything happened, I was organized and I was able to go right to that number and call and make certain to update the professor. Thank you, Dr. Massey. It is so important. Uh, three things that I took away from that. Uh, great communication skills so that you can make those good presentations because this is vitally important. Um, you need to be organized, stay on top of everything, and have a 411 and everybody you need to know so that you, your, your professors, your leaders, your trainers, your team members, what have you, you just need to have that their information at hand in case of an emergency. It's been a great uh, time with you, Dr. Massey. I look forward to you coming back sometime. But at this point, I'm going to throw it back to Dr. Vaughn. Dr. Vaughn? Thanks so much, Lango. I have been sitting here taking notes. I've been so appreciative of the wealth of information and knowledge that uh, Dr. Massey has been sharing. Uh, as, as you may recall, Lango, my wife and I have 
five children, uh, and all of them uh, are in college or or done with college. But I'm telling you that if we if we can find this recording when our grandkids are ready for college, we're just going to sit them down and have them listen uh, to some of the lessons that Dr. <laughs> Massey just shared because they are timeless, uh, and we are so thankful uh, for you being able to share. I cannot believe that we are just about out of time. Uh, that's what happens when you're having a good conversation. Uh, I do want to, before we wrap up though, go back to your book, The Face of the New Engineer. Can you tell us what is it that you would say to folks who ask the question, why should I read this? and then let them know how they can get it. Absolutely. I'm so excited about my book because in the book, I share stories about my upbringings with my audience. And also just a little bit more about my journey to becoming an engineer. It was so important for me to share uh, my experiences, including the struggles uh, just to let them know that the path to getting to where I am was not easy, but it is possible. Um, and you can purchase the book. It's available on Amazon. You just type in the title, The Face of a New Engineer by LaShawn Massey, and it'll pull up the book. Very cool. That's simple enough. And uh, <laughs> we, we certainly uh, look forward to having the opportunity to check it out. I believe that Lango mentioned in one of her uh, parts of the conversation with you that we certainly know that we have entered into Women's History Month. So would you give us uh, just a few words of encouragement, uh, certainly for or, uh, the members of our audience who are women. Uh, but I think that women's history, of course, is all of our history. So how would you encourage us, the audience, uh, with a final word of inspiration or empowerment for the future? Well, I would definitely say to be bold and be deliberate in your actions. And don't be afraid a failure because my opinion is failure is when you don't try. I know oftentimes we find people that decide not to go into STEM fields and STEM careers because they are afraid to fail. Well, I would just encourage them just to step out and to, to be bold and to go out and try some of those avenues that they thought were not possible. I think that that's a great reminder to all of us. And, and it's aligned with the headline. I, I'm always looking for headlines as we are enjoying spending time with our guests. And you said, look in the mirror and tell yourself, you belong here. That is something that I have absolutely done uh, as a student, undergrad, a graduate student, and a professional for 30 plus years. You belong here. And I think that uh, you just closed us out with a third B. So uh, becoming boundless, boldly, with balance. Uh, that, that sounds like a title for another book, if you ask me. Uh, but anyway, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that another time. Uh, Dr. LaShawn Massey, it has been really a pleasure. Could you tell us uh, if there's a, a website or social media uh, linkages, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram that you have that we might be able to use to encourage people to continue to follow you? Yes, absolutely. You can find me on Facebook, um, just at LaShawn Massey. Uh, I'm also uh, on, I also have a website for uh, my Mrs. Dallas, where you can also find me as well, but everything is on my Facebook profile. Um, yes, please just send an invite and you can definitely follow some of the things that I'm doing, uh, both in academia and also on my journey uh, to, uh, to competing for the title of Mrs. Texas. Very cool. 
So we will encourage, we are encouraging uh, the listeners to check that out. And there you have it, everybody. Uh, Conversation on Becoming Boundless with Dr. LaShawn Massey. Again, it's been a pleasure. And uh, I am looking forward to hearing more great things as you consider uh, on your pursuit of boundlessness. We're going to turn it back over to Brandon Newby, who's going to send us out. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of High Tech Sunday. Career Communications Group's High Tech Sunday looks at professional development and technology through the lens of spiritual philosophies. In a time when digital information is more critical than ever, this weekly program is produced by and for CCG's community of alumni and professionals in science, technology, engineering, and math fields. The community runs from national thought leaders to aspiring students, and this weekly series aims to bring a concentrated discussion around technological advancements and achievements based on universal moral principles. The one-hour podcast will be streamed every Sunday. The podcast can be accessed through the Bay of Facebook page, Women of Color Facebook page, and CCG YouTube page, in addition to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podbean, and Spotify. Please join us next time.